The Cab Calloway School of the Arts Spirit Marching Band, directed by Mr. James Tharp, presents Universality, featuring the music of the planets by Gustav Hulse, arranged by John Meehan. Ancient Greeks believed that the planets had direct influence on human affairs. The basic drives of humans and the differing qualities of human personality could be attributed to the planet's influences. Gustav Hulse composed the planets between 1914 and 1916 and chose to represent each planet according to those astrological qualities as expressed in the original titles of each movement. All of these qualities are universal to the human races and are expressed throughout our show. Mercury, the winged messenger, represents intelligence, wit, reason, and communication. Venus, the bringer of peace, represents harmony, beauty, love, resilience, and empathy. Mars, the bringer of war, represents energy, strength, aggressiveness, ambition, and confidence. Jupiter, the bringer of jollity, represents growth, prosperity, good fortune, freedom, and exploration. Saturn, the bringer of old age, represents focus, achievement, stability, lessons learned, and tradition. Uranus, the magician, represents ingenuity, invention, new ideas, discoveries, and genius. Neptune, the mystic, represents idealism, dreams, artistry, illusion, and vagueness. We are all connected to each other biologically, to the earth chemically, to the rest of the universe atomically.
what's made conscious. And life is the means by which the universe understands itself. this universe. We are in this universe. But perhaps more important than both of those facts is that the universe is in us.
Cap Calloway School of the Arts Theater. Before you're seated, please make sure to pay attention to the following theater rules and etiquette. Before entering, please make sure to dispose of all food, beverages, and gum that you may have. Water bottles are permitted, but please make sure they stay quiet during the show. Please follow the aisles to your seats. These will be illuminated during the show for any entrance and exit needs. When you get to your seat, please remain seated as to not disrupt the performance. In case of emergency, there are two exits in the front and two exits in the back. Please be sure to silence or power down any electronic devices that you may have as to not performers. Make sure to stay quiet during the show. Please, refrain from flash photography or any bright screens. We would like to warn everyone that loud noises and strobe lights will be used during the performance. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Middle school piano majors and sixth grade communication art majors worked on this cultural tour through time and space. From American immigrants to the Far East, join us on this musical and visual journey, compliments of Mr. Steve Mayo and Ms. Margaret Badger. Author Isabel Andell writes, 
We do not even know how strong we are until we are forced to bring that hidden strength forward. In times of tragedy, of war, of necessity, people do amazing things. The human capacity for survival and renewal is awesome. Broadcast journalist Doreen Kagan writes, bad things do happen in this world, like war, natural disaster, disease, but out of those situations always arise stories of ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And Russian author Leo Tolstoy wrote, the two most powerful warriors are patience and time. These are just a few quotes about war and how it affects us in the world. Dance 2, under the direction of Ms. Cohen Sherlock, is performing a strong, dynamic piece to the music R.A. from Nathan Lanier. We dedicate this piece to all the fallen soldiers. was a fictional character who first appeared in the Victorian story The String of Pearls, published in 1846. The tale became a staple of Victorian melodrama and London urban legend, and has been retold many times since, most notably in the Tony Award-winning Broadway musical by Stephen Sondheim. The plot of Sweeney Todd is very eerie. A barber murders his customers by slitting their throats with his shaving razor, and turns their bodies over to Mrs. Lovett, his partner in crime, who bakes their flesh into meat pies in her adjoining pie shop. Join us on Fleet Street, London, as the musical theater company recalls the story of the demon barber. Directed by Miss Margie Eldreth, this is the Ballad of Sweeney Todd.
attend the tale of Sweeney Todd. His skin was pale and his eye was odd. He shaved the faces of gentlemen who never thereafter were heard of again. He trod a path that few had trod, did Sweeney Todd. The demon by my feet to street. Kept a shop in London town, a fancy finds a good renown. And while the fit of their souls were saved, they went to their maker and had to be shamed. My sweet, my sweet time, the demon by the fidget street. National Art Honor Society and sixth grade dance majors work together to create this next piece. Under the artistic direction of Mr. Gregory and Ms. Matson Robbins, this piece takes us on a journey through time while exploring the idea of acceptance in all forms. Visual art and dance share many similarities, working with and in the space, attention to detail, energy-driven processes, unpredictability, and the element of surprise. As an audience member, we hope you will look through your own lens and perspective of your own life experiences to find something powerful and meaning to you. This collaboration has been rewarding for all involved, and we hope you enjoy the performance.
La Flor de la Carnela, or the Cinnamon Flower, by Chabuca Grano, is a Creole waltz brought to the Americas from Spain and adapted in the style of the Creole people, specifically in Peru. This piece has become an unofficial anthem for the capital city of Lima, Peru. Today, it will be played for you by seventh grade piano major Carlos Enrique Espinosa in honor of his Peruvian heritage. Following that, you will hear Eka Dantaya Vakra Duntaya by singer and composer Shankar Mahavadan. This piece praises the elephant god Ganesh in Hindu culture. in both Indian and Western choir fusion, and it is one of the most popular songs on YouTube with over 50 million views. Today, eighth grade piano major Sriyansh Kolipaka will play his own arrangement of this piece for you.
utilizing a variety of different theatrical conventions, Mr. Moser and Ms. Curry's high school and middle school theater majors will perform a devised piece based on the poem Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll. This nonsensical text of the poem invites the audience on an adventure into, to envision their own world of the Jabberwocky. Was brilling and the slidy toes did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the boro crows and the mome rats outgrave. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jub jub bird and shun the fumi's bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand, long time to make some foe he sought. So rested he by the tum tum tree, he stood a while and thought. And as in other's thought he stood, the jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the told you wood and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through, the vorpal blade went snicker snack. He left it dead, and with its head, he went galumping back. And hast thou slain the jabberwock? Come to my arms, my meanish boy. O oh, fragile day, kaloo kalay. He chortled in his joy. Twas brillig and the slidy toes did gyre and gimble in the waves. All mimsy were the burrow groves and the mome rats outgrave. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble, cool it with the baboon's brood, then the charm is firm and good. This is a section from Song of the Witches, written by William Shakespeare for his play Macbeth. Shakespeare's play is full of the supernatural, from witches and their prophecies, to ghosts and murder in various forms, as well as revenge and retribution. Join the men's choir, directed by Mr. Martin Lastman, the seventh grade dance majors choreographed and directed by Ms. Tara Madsen Robbins and student of Ms. Margaret Badger, pianist Cameron Kuzevsky, as they present a chilling rendition of this famous scene from Shakespeare's Macbeth, The Witching Hour.
Dance 3 is performing a dance theme music prodigy by film, TV, and video game composer Nathan Landon. The dancers were interested in the mythology of Athena, goddess of wisdom and war. They learned that Athena was the goddess of wisdom, courage, inspiration, civilization, law and justice, strategic warfare, strengths, and arts and crafts. Athena was also often portrayed as a companion of heroes and is the patron of goddess of heroic endeavor. After learning this, the dancers represented the strong and soft aspects of the music with the constant change of quality of movement to show dynamics, nuances, fluidity, and versatility. Ms. Cohen Sherlock and the dancers hope that you enjoy the aesthetic beauty and fierceness of the warrior, warrior Athena. Melody Bober, a native of Minnesota, loves to motivate her students through developing their understanding and love of music. Today, 8th grade piano major Daphne Tanner will perform the lovely Midnight Rhapsody. Full of the imagery and magic of music in a night event, this piece will describe a festive occasion. The second piece you will hear was written by Norwegian composer Edward Grieg, who is one of the celebrated Romantic era composers. Grieg was a colleague of Franz Liszt, Many of his themes and motifs evoke the beauty of the Norwegian mountains and their mythical stories. Today, seventh grade piano major and strings double major, Parker Dilworth will play for you Nocturne, Nocturne or Night Song.
there are always lines, long lines, at Brouhaha, at Dunkin' Donuts, at Wawa, and of course, at Starbucks, because we are addicted to coffee. And not just plain coffee, oh no. We are required to know the flavors we can inject into the coffee. And we have to know the, jar the jargon, including the definition of skinny, latte, mocha, foam, grande, and tentry, double shot, cappuccino, and espresso. It's not a folklore, it's a daily ritual, and it's all encapsulated in the caffeine overload polka directed by Mr. Martin Lassman and performed by pianist Cameron Kuzepski and the Advanced Shovel Choir.
misunderstandings and confusion. We see trees of green and red roses too. We see skies of blue, clouds of white, the bright blessed day and the sacred night. We see the colors of the rainbow so pretty in the sky and the colors on the faces of people going by. We see friends shaking hands saying, how do you do? But what they really are saying is I love you. And we say to ourselves, what a wonderful world. The symphonic band will perform this iconic song made famous by jazz trumpeter Louis Armstrong, accompanied by the 8th grade communication arts major's montage of images portraying the aspects of unity and chaos. The symphonic band is directed by Dr. Carlton Cannon Jr. and the 8th grade communication arts majors are instructed by Mr. Stephen Mayo.
visually tell a story. They illustrate a mythos. Through the creative process, an artist engages his or her head, heart, and hand to tell their story. The artworks currently on view in the CCSA Fine Arts Gallery to demonstrate our visual arts uh, majors' visual storytelling abilities. Come enjoy the artwork created by high school visual arts students under the tutelage of Ms. Tony Ann DeGregor. The middle school visual arts students, instructed by Mrs. Lindsay Ostafy, are proud to exhibit their work in the gallery for showstoppers. The theme mytho mythos runs deep in the curriculum for the first marking period, and students are proud of the work they have produced. Please visit the gallery and check out all of the hard work on display. Showstoppers 2018. Our second act opens with the Panjamas, our steel drum band, and the middle school dance company performing a collaborative piece with music adapted from a West Indian tune called Steam Pipe Rumba. You will notice that many of the percussion players are playing non-traditional instruments, such as trash cans, biscuit tins, and glass bottles. In Trinidad, these were the precursors to the steel drum instruments we recognize today and many groups still incorporate them in their percussion sections to retain the old school feeling of calypso music from the 1940s. Arranged by Jimmy Layden, directed by Miss Margie Eldreth, and choreographed by Miss Tara Madsen Robbins, this is Cantata. Thank you. 
Ms. Sarah Nowak and Mr. Stephen Mayo have joined forces again with Ms. Nowak's classes and 7th grade communication arts majors to produce short animated features from several parts of the world. Though different in culture, we can find universal truths that all of us can appreciate. The Norse gods were known to be young and beautiful, but you may be wondering how they stayed this way forever. I'll tell you how. It started when Odin and Loki were trying to eat a cow, and the meat would not cook. How come this meat won't cook? Suddenly, an eagle swooped down. Yay! Yay! It will, it only will, if you give me some meat. They agreed, but when the eagle took the best part of the meat, Loki got upset. I jumped to a fight. The bird won, and while dragging Loki on the ground, and said, I will only let you go if you get me the apples that make gods a world. Later. Hey, Edith, now that we are friends, would you mind going outside with me for a walk? Okay, Loki, I'll go outside. I, now that Loki got eaten away, I will capture her and all her apples. Many years later, the gods began to grow old, and they didn't like that, so they held a meeting. Someone has stolen the golden apples, and I blame Loki. Agree! Let's kill him. Wait, wait, wait. I'll get the apples back. Just let me live. The gods turned Loki into an eagle so he could fly away and get the apples back. Loki turned Eden and her apples into a nut, which he carried in his beak all the way back to the gods, and he was not killed. And that's why the gods are so young and healthy. I have finished the earth, but soon you must go into war to become leader of earth. All of the animals give a war cry before a fight. Oh. I came to great grandfather spirit during the war, which was a risky move to do. Great grandfather, this is not right. What is your problem with the coyote? Show me your solution. Yes, great grandfather. My solution is to make male and females live throughout the world to control the animals and discover new things. Coyote splits himself into two and turns himself into a male and female magically. That's a very weird idea, but let's do it. I'll get to work and I'll tell the other animals to stop fighting in the war. Great grandfather spirit got to work on what he said he would do. Thank you, great grandfather spirit. Soon after, great grandfather spirit finished his nice work. He gave even more power to Coyote than any of the other animals as a reward. Indra so full of himself. I'll teach you a lesson. Why would you worship Indra? Instead you could worship the Govardhan mountains and its forests, which your livelihood depends on. What does Indra do? Not much. Are you kidding me? These villagers are going to suffer. Clouds! I want to rain all over Vrindavan. Seven days and nights passed. The village is now dry. Clouds, that's enough rain. Krishna, I apologize for making you hold a mountain on your pinky finger and being arrogant. I understand not to be arrogant anymore, and I know that it was wrong for me to ask the clouds to rain on the village. Peace was restored and everyone was smiling and laughing. The end. Chinese mythology, the creation of the world. Beginning of time, there was nothing in the world except for blackness and chaos. From the blackness, an egg grew. Inside of the egg was Pandu. He grew for eons inside of the egg. Once he had grown into the, a gigantic egg, he stretched his legs. In doing so, he broke open the egg. The lighter parts of the egg, yin, floated into the sky and created heaven. All the denser parts, yang, fell down and created the earth. Pandu was pleased with what had happened. To prevent yin and yang from joining back together, Pandu stood up and stretched his arms and legs, holding up heaven and pushing down earth. He stood there for 18,000 years, growing 10 feet a year, until he felt that they were secure 30,000 miles apart. Now exhausted from standing for 18,000 years, he fell asleep and never woke up. 
Pangu died and his body became the earth and its elements. His breath became the wind, his eyes became the sun and moon, his nose became mountains, his voice became the booming thunder, his arms and legs became the four directions, his blood became the flowing rivers, rivers and his veins turned into paths that men and women traveled, and his flesh became the soil and trees that grew. As for the bugs on his body, they became the amazing races of humans. The Boston Nova began on the tropical beaches of Rio de Janeiro in the late 1950s, when a small group of students, artists, and musicians came together to create a new sound. Bossa Nova was a soft samba, based on the traditional Brazilian music and rhythms, American jazz, and a new style of Portuguese lyrics. You can't hear a Bossa Nova without mentally drifting away to warm summer beaches and soft sand. You can almost see the tan bodies strolling casually on the beach. Our jazz choir, the Jazz Chorus of Callaway, is directed by Mr. Martin Lassman and is accustomed to singing jazz and pop songs both a cappella and with piano. But this performance is a first for them. For showstoppers, the jazz chords will combine our string quartet to perform the clef and summer samba, also known as so nice.
From William Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream, Oberon the Fairy King and Titania the Fairy Queen are at odds with each other. Their fighting has caused destruction throughout the land, and in this scene, Oberon and his servants, Puck, square off with Titania and her fairies in the woods. Please enjoy Intro to Acting's performance of A Midsummer Night's Dream, directed by Mr. Brendan Moser. Starlight Sheen. But they do square. They're all their else for fear. Creep into acorn cuss and hide them there. Either I must take your shape in making quite, or else you're that shrewd and knavish sprite, called Robin Goodfellow. Are you not he who frights the maiden from the villagery? Skin milk can sometimes labor in the quarry, bootless make the breakfast housewife churn, and sometimes make the drink that bear no barm, misled night wanderers laughing at their harm. Those that have that one call you and sweet pup. You do their work and you shall have good luck. Or not you he? All right, all right. We are those merry wanderers of the night. We jest to Oberon and make him smile when we have fat and bean fed horse beguiled. No! And they in likeness of Philly Fall and sometime their guy in gossip's bowl. In very likeness of a rose <laughs> And when she drinks against her lips, I fall. And on her with her do that, pour the ale, the wisest aunt telling the saddest tale. Sometimes her three foot stool is sticking, like slip from a bum down top of shape. And Taylor cries and falls to cough. Then the whole choir holds their hips and starts to laugh. And wax them in the mirth and knees and swear, not a merrier hour is ever wasted there. The through fairy, here comes Oberon. And my mistress, from that you are gone. Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. What? Jealous Oberon. Fairies, skip hence. I have forsworn his bed and company. Terry! Rash wanton, am not I thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. But I know when thou hast stolen away from fairyland, and in the shape of corn sat all day, playing on pipes of corn and versing love to amorous Phyllida. Why art thou here? Come from the farthest step of India. But that forsooth the bouncing Amazon, your busk and mistress and warrior love to Theseus must be wedded. You come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How canst thou thus for shame to taunt you glance at my credit with Apollida, knowing I know thy love to Theseus? These are the forgeries of jealousy. And never, since the middle summer spring, met we on hill, in dale, forest, or mead to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind. But with thy brawls, <laughs> thou hast disturbed our sport. The human mortals want their winter here. No night is now with him or Carol blessed, and therefore the moon, the governess of floods, pale in her anger, washes all the air that rheumatic diseases do abound. And through this distemperature, we see the seasons alter. And this same progeny of evils comes from our debate, our dissension. We are their parents and original. Do you amend it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her over on? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fair land buys not the child with me. His mother was a votaress of my order, but she being mortal, of the boy did die, and for her sake, 
do I rear up her boy, and for her sake I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus' wedding day. If you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, shun me, and I will spare your haunts. Give me that boy, and I will go with you. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies, away. We shall chide downright if I longer stay. The Dance 1 and 2 class will be performing as dance to Survivor by 2WEF. This piece is about women empowerment and not letting other people, or in particular men, control you in life. It is especially important during this time in our society that women fight for what is right and know that they have a voice and that will be heard. At the beginning of this piece, the dancers show mind control that the man has over them and through the dance, all fight and conquer over him. Ms. Cohen Sherlock and the dancer from 1 and 2 hope you enjoy this power of Survivor. and layout of the three fantastic dances for piano by Dmitry Shostakovich. Shostakovich was a 20th century Russian composer and pianist who wrote these dances at the age of 16. The choreographic process pays careful attention to the changes in musical styles within each section, while also expressing the meaning of the musical pieces throughout the movement. 
It's about Bruning, who's both an eighth grade piano major and cello major, will perform live on the piano. Isabella's performance of these pieces inspired other members of the piano studio. Both her piano teacher, Miss Badger, and dance teacher, Miss Matson Robbins, loved this collaboration, which was truly rewarding for all involved. We know you will also love three fantastic dances for piano. Cinema Studies and Videography 2 class has worked together on a collaborative project for this year's show Stoppers in which they all wrote, filmed, and edited. The video is about a foreign exchange student from Europe who visits Cat Gallery and stays with one of the school's students and their family. It's full of plot twists, surprising moments, and good laughs for everyone. Please enjoy the foreign exchange students.
Good morning, friends. Morning. Today, we have a very special visitor. He's from Europe. He's a foreign exchange student. And his name is, his name is Z Zeus. Hello. Um, my name is Zeus. Uh, I'm from Mount Olympus in Greece. And I'm here on a foreign exchange program, learning about all of this new culture and stuff. Plus him. Please welcome him. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Mark. Well, I would like to thank you all for letting me stay here, but more importantly, I would like to thank Braddington for letting me stay with him and his family. I applaud you, Braddington. All right, Braddington. Okay, so uh, my name is Brad, and it's short for Bradley, not Braddington. Uh, my family was hosting a foreign exchange student program so kids from Europe could learn about American culture. Didn't know what to expect, but uh, yeah, yeah, this is not it. Greek mythology, but most importantly, Hercules. Hey, hey, come here. I know that guy. He's a cool dude, but like, total gym freak. I'll tell you what. All right, clowns, everybody get out your homework. Let's go, homework. our world history class today, we have presentations that are due. We had to pick a subject and then present it to the classroom as such. Of course, I picked the most important topic in all of history. Okay, excuse me everyone, we're about ready to start. Now, my presentation today 
is on the most important subject ever taught in history. Me. We <laughs> have some, uh, some adjusting to do. My favorite teacher so far? I would say it would have to be that Mr. Gardening Man. He mentions this restaurant. Hey, Zeus, this is what we do at Cab Calibre. Right. Welcome to Moe's! Welcome to Moe's! Welcome to Moe's! Welcome to Moe's! I don't know what it is or what it serves, but I'm very enticed to check it out. <laughs> so, it's time to take him back to Mount Olympus. So, so sad to see him go, obviously, but I think it's for the best. Brendan Moser, that was magnificent. You and your family have shown me so much love and kindness that you know what I'm going to do? I have just decided, right now and here, that I am going to stay in the company of your family permanently. And I don't mean that as a figurative statement. I mean that quite literally. I am an immortal guy. You are going to live with me for the rest of your life. We will be brothers in arms. Frankly, I couldn't be happier. Yay. <laughs> Shakespeare's tragedy Macbeth, three witches give a prophecy to the brave soldier Macbeth, telling him he will be future king of Scotland. In the process of taking and keeping the crown, Macbeth leaves a trail of blood. Macbeth was written to get on the good side of the new King James, who loved witches and whose ancestor was Benguo, one of the heroes in the story who Macbeth kills. As Macbeth begins to fear others will try to take the crown from him, he prepares for more bloodshed and seeks further prophecy and warning from the witches. In this scene, Macbeth learns his fate. Please enjoy Advanced Theatre Company's performance of Macbeth Act 4, Scene 1, directed by Mr. Brandon Moser. Thrice the bride did cat hath mewed. Thrice once the head did whine. Hark your cries, tis time, tis time. Round about the cauldron go, in the poison entrails throw. Toad that under cold stone days and nights hath thirty one. Sweltered venom sleeping got, boil thou first in the charmed pot. Double, double toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. The lay of the fenny snake in the cauldron boil and bake. I of newt and toe of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog. At a spork and blindbird sting, lizards like an owl's swing for a charm of powerful trouble. Like a hell broth, boil and bubble. Double, double toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Scale of a dragon, tooth of a wolf, witches, mummy, ma, and gulf, and of the rabbit, salt sea shark, root of hemlock, digged in the dark, and there too a tiger's chaldron, for the ingredients of our cauldron. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Cool it with baboon's blood, then the charm is firm and good. By the clicking of my thumb, something wicked this way comes. How now, you secret black and midnight hags? What is it you do? A, a deed without a name. I conjure you by which that you profess, howe'er you come to know it. 
Answer me to what I ask you. Speak. The man will answer. Say if thou hadst rather hear it from our mouths or from our masters. Call them, let me see them. Pour in so blood that hath eaten, her nine sparrows grass that sweating, from the murderer's given throw, into the flame come high, high or low, thyself in office that we show. Tell me, thou unknown power. He knows thy thought. Hear his speech, but say thou not. Macbeth, 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 beware, Macduff, beware the thing of fight. Dismiss me, enough. Whate'er thou art for thy good caution, thanks. Thou hast harped my fears all right, but one word more. He will not be commanded. Here is another, more potent than the first. Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. Had I for years, I'd hear thee. Be bloody, bold, and resolute. Laugh to scorn the power of man, for none of woman born shall harm Macbeth. Then live Macduff. What need I fear of thee? And yet I'll make assurance double sure, and take a bond of fate. Thou shalt not live, that I may tell pale-hearted fear it lies, and sleep in spite of thunder. But what is this? that rises like the issue of a king and wears upon its baby brow the round and top of sovereignty. Listen, but speak not to it. You lie in meddled crowd and take no care who chafes, who frets, or where whose fibers are. Macbeth shall never vanquish thee until great Burnham Wood to high Dunsinane Hill shall come against him. That will never be. Who can impress the forest, bid the tree and fix his earthbound root sweet boatman's good? Rebellion's head rise never till the wood of Burnham rise, and our high place Macbeth shall live in the lease of nature, pay his breath to time and mortal custom. Yet my heart throbs to know one thing more. Tell me if your art can tell so much, shall Banquo's issue ever reign in this kingdom? Seek to know no more. I will be satisfied. Deny me this and an eternal curse fall on you. Show, 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 show his eyes and grieve his heart. Come like shadows, so depart. Oh, too art like the spirit of Banquo. Down! The crown does sear mine eyeballs and thy hair. Thou other gold bound brow is like the first, a third is like the former. Filthy eyes, why do you show me this? A fourth, start eyes, what will this line stretch out to the crack of doom? Another yet, a seventh, I'll see no more. And yet an eighth appears, who bears a glass, which shows me many more. And some I see that twofold ball and treble scepters carry. Horrible sight, for now I see tis true, for the blood Walter Banquo smiles upon me and points at them for his. Where are they? Gone? Let this pernicious hour stand I accursed in the calendar. Come in without there. What's your grace's will? Saw you the weird sisters. No, my lord. Came they not by you? No, indeed, my lord. Infected be the air whereon they ride, and damned all those that trust them. I did hear the galloping of horses. Who was it that came by? Tis two or three, my lord, that send you word. Macduff has fled to England. Fled to England? Aye, my good lord.
The Cab Calvary School of the Arts Piano Studio will end its showstopper's performance this year with the beloved fantasy Improp 2 by Polish-French composer Frederick Chopin. 11th grade pianist, organist, cellist, and conductor Carmen Kozewski was able to spend time in the summer of 2018 in Poland's Chopin Park, prior to conducting an orchestra in Bulgaria. This glorious and beautiful piece is one of the most recognized pieces of piano music from one of the piano's most prolific composers. Please enjoy.
Polynesian chants and adapted texts from Tahiti and many of the islands of the Pacific are the basis of this next piece. The title, Kahia Manu, translates as many birds and is in recognition of the importance that birds have in the folklore and the arts of these cultures. Also included in the song is a text to honor the great kings of ancient times, including King Otuma Toa and founding patriarch Rapa Nui. Arranged by Stephen Hatfield, directed by Ms. Margie Eldreth, and choreographed by Ms. Allison Cohen Sherlock, the high school vocal majors and high school dance company present to you Kaki Yamani.
Thank you.